three, two, one. Starship V3 is closing in, and with it comes SpaceX's new workhorse, the Raptor 3 engine. Seen as the core of the company's next generation of vehicles, this power plant has already proven itself on the test stand, showing big jumps in thrust, efficiency, and reliability. Raptor 3 is a major step forward in rocket design, laying the groundwork for a new era of truly high-performance, reusable launch systems. So the big question is, just how much muscle does this thing really have? That's what we're going to dig into in today's episode of Great SpaceX. It's been a while since Flight 11, the last mission of the Starship 5-2 era. That launch closed one chapter and opened another in SpaceX's push toward full reusability and true interplanetary capability. Starship V3 brings a whole stack of upgrades, but at the center of all the hype is one star player, the Raptor 3 engine. During the Flight 11 livestream, SpaceX gave us a rare sneak peek at this new engine in action. In a short 27-second clip, they showed two separate firings, one sea-level Raptor and one vacuum variant. Even in that tiny window of footage, you could clearly see the raw power and precision engineering that set Raptor 3 apart. The first engine SpaceX rolled out on screen was the sea-level Raptor. As it lit up, a thin crust of frost crept across the upper section, popping visually against the dark, streamlined hardware. It's not just a cool shot for the live stream, that frosting is a sign of how efficiently the engine deals with those ultra-cold propellants. Under that sheet of ice, Raptor 3 was hammering out roughly 280 metric tons of thrust, around 620,000 pounds of push. That's a big leap, nudging past Blue Origin's BE-4, which used to be the Methalox benchmark. The firing also showed off its improved thrust vectoring, or gimbal control. In the footage, the engine sat on a rig that looked a lot like Starship's real engine bay, letting it swing smoothly while firing. That range of motion lets the thrust vector shift on the fly without losing power, which is huge for tight attitude control. You need that kind of steering from the pad all the way through ascent, orbital insertion, payload release, and a guided return. Down the road, that kind of fine control is exactly what you need for tricky moves like on-orbit refueling and long-range course corrections in deep space. After the sea level run, SpaceX switched things up and showed off the vacuum-optimized Raptor, built specifically to fire in the airless environment of space. For a lot of people, this was probably the first time seeing a Raptor vacuum test on camera and it absolutely delivered. In that brief firing, the Vacuum Raptor pushed past 300 metric tons of thrust, spiking at roughly 306, putting it at the top of the charts for liquid-fueled engines in its class. It can't swivel like the sea level version, but that giant bell nozzle is tuned for hard vacuum, squeezing out maximum efficiency and steady power where there's zero atmosphere to fight against. The sea level Raptors are all about steering and control, but the Vacuum version is a straight-up performance beast. Put them together and you get an engine lineup that underpins the next big step for Starship. Even with just a few seconds of footage, these early tests have cranked up the hype for the first V3 launch. It's important to remember that the clip SpaceX showed is just a tiny slice of each run. Behind the scenes, a full engine test can fire for several minutes, slamming the hardware with brutal pressure and searing temperatures. But the real exam for Raptor 3 won't happen on a test stand. Only on a full-up launch will these engines be hit with heat, vibration, and aerodynamic loads all at once, while dozens of them fire together. The next big milestone is the static fire of Booster S39, a test that will move SpaceX a lot closer to proving what this setup can really do. After that comes Starship Flight 12, an even bigger deal, because it won't just measure how hard Raptor 3 can push, it'll show how well the system survives the brutal ride back down. There's still a long list of risks and unknowns ahead, but SpaceX has plenty of reasons to bet on this hardware. SpaceX has pushed Raptor 3 to a new level in both raw power and the way the engine is built. The most obvious headline is the thrust bump. The sea level version jumps from around 230 metric tons on Raptor 2 to about 280, 
and the vacuum unit climbs to roughly 306 metric tons. That puts Raptor 3 at the front of the Methalox pack and makes it one of the most powerful liquid-fueled engines on the planet. This kind of performance puts SpaceX back out in front of the pack. For a while, Blue Origin's BE-4, with roughly 250 metric tons of thrust, could claim a slight edge in the Methalox game. That window has closed. With Raptor 3, SpaceX has jumped ahead again and raised the bar for what a modern rocket engine is expected to do. But the scary part isn't just that each Raptor 3 hits harder on its own, it's what happens when you cluster 33 of them under a single booster. Light them all. And Super Heavy is shoving more than 9,000 metric tons of force off the pad, on the order of 20 million pounds of thrust, roughly two and a half to three times the mighty Saturn V that launched Apollo to the moon. Even so, we're just at the opening act. Based on what Musk has shared and the latest design targets, SpaceX wants future Starship versions, starting with V4, to break past 10,000 metric tons of total thrust at liftoff that's over 22 million pounds. To get there, each engine would have to climb to roughly 330 metric tons of thrust, pushing rocket engineering right up against its current limits. Raptor 3 isn't just a booster engine, it also drives the Starship upper stage, with its cluster cranking out roughly 1,700 metric tons of combined thrust. That kind of muscle is what makes serious missions to the Moon, Mars, and even deeper targets realistically achievable. And one of the biggest wins with Raptor 3 isn't just power, it's how much cleaner and more streamlined the overall design has become. In other words, Raptor 3 isn't only about going big, it's about going smart. You could brute force your way to higher thrust with a clumsy design and oversized margins, but that wouldn't scale to high launch cadence. The elegance in this engine, fewer parts, tighter integration, better cooling is what eventually allows Starship to act like a workhorse for science missions, commercial payloads, and maybe one day, ordinary passengers. In this iteration, SpaceX deliberately stripped out lots of tiny, failure-prone parts and replaced them with bigger, more unified hardware. Those old bolted flanges and screw connections, the spots most likely to leak or trap excess heat, are now mostly solid welds. That shift boosts reliability and trims mass at the same time, which is huge for overall efficiency. The change here is huge. Raptor 3 comes in at around 1,525 kilograms, roughly 3,360 pounds, versus about 1,600 kilograms for Raptor 2 and close to 2,000 kilograms for the first generation engine. So it's lighter, yet it hits harder and holds up better. On top of that, SpaceX added an active cooling system, letting the engine stay stable and predictable even when it's being hammered by extreme heat and crushing pressure. Thanks to that upgraded cooling, Raptor 3 doesn't need a bulky external heat shield anymore, shaving off dead weight. That margin can now go toward extra payload, so a V3 Starship can haul well over 100 metric tons more than 220,000 pounds to orbit. A clear step up from earlier versions, dropping that shield, one of the heaviest pieces of the old setup, is a big part of how SpaceX unlocked that extra performance. The external shield around the engine was originally there to soak up the intense heat and prevent damage, but it came with a serious weight penalty. Now that Raptor 3 relies on an active cooling system, that extra layer isn't needed anymore. Peeling it off slims the engine down and makes each launch more efficient. And the benefits of this cleaner, simplified design go far beyond just how it flies. You can see the impact of this philosophy all the way back at the factory floor. For SpaceX, simplicity isn't just an aesthetic choice. It's the only way to build at scale, and their track record proves it. When they moved from Raptor 1 to Raptor 2, build time dropped from over 11 days per engine to about two, and eventually down to roughly a single day for each unit. Raptor 3 pushes that philosophy even further, with a tighter, more unified layout that cuts out excess hardware and makes the whole thing quicker to put together. SpaceX is cranking up production using heavy automation and modern tooling precision welders, robotics, and large format 3D printing to turn out engines faster, more consistently, and for less money. 
By stripping the engine down and simplifying how it's put together, SpaceX drives costs down and trustworthiness up the foundation you need for real rapid reuse. Where Raptor 2 demanded a lot of post-flight work, the cleaner Raptor 3 layout is built for fast checkups and quick turnarounds. Musk's endgame is wild. Super heavy launching on something like an hourly cadence, with starships heading up almost every day, and this engine is the only reason that vision isn't pure science fiction. If you zoom out, that's the kind of cadence that reshapes entire industries. Weather satellites can be refreshed more often, communications constellations can be repaired instead of abandoned, and planetary missions no longer have to wait for a single narrow launch window every few years. For viewers who don't care about specific impulse, there's still a takeaway. Faster, cheaper access to orbit ripples into better internet, better climate data, and more economic opportunity back on the ground. Even with all the breakthroughs, Raptor 3 still comes with serious headaches. The full-flow staged combustion cycle that gives it such high efficiency is also one of the most demanding engine architectures ever attempted. It requires near-perfect tolerances everywhere. A tiny imbalance in propellant flow or combustion can snowball into a catastrophic loss of the engine in milliseconds. The upsides here, higher efficiency, improved cooling, and tuning the engine to really make the most of super-cold propellants all come with a brutal engineering price tag. Every valve, every turbo pump, every combustion chamber has to stay in lockstep, or things go bad fast. And chasing simple isn't free either. To get the hardware leaner and lighter, SpaceX is packing more function into fewer parts and leaning hard on advanced welding instead of the old-school forest of bolts and flanges. That approach squeezes out more performance and trims mass, but it makes life harder when something goes wrong inside the engine. If there's an internal issue, you can't always just undo a few bolts and pull a section off for a quick look or swap. In some cases, crews may have to literally cut into the engine structure, a slow, delicate process that carries its own risks. For a company that ultimately wants to reuse these rockets on timelines measured in hours, not days, that kind of repair complexity can turn into a real bottleneck if they don't engineer around it. But growing pains like this are baked into any truly cutting-edge system. Each Raptor version has exposed new problems, forced new fixes, and taught SpaceX something different. Every engine in the lineup is basically another rung on the ladder toward rockets that are reliable, low-cost, and launching often enough to make space feel routine. So when you see a prototype explode on the pad or break apart in the sky, it's not just spectacle, it's tuition. SpaceX is effectively paying, in stainless steel and methane, for knowledge that slowly converges on an engine and a vehicle that behave predictably, can be mass-produced, and can be serviced quickly enough to run like an airline instead of a once-a-year stunt. That mindset is uncomfortable, but it's also why progress feels so fast. SpaceX is standing right on the edge of a huge shift. Starship V3, with Raptor 3 at its core, isn't just a minor refresh or a new hardware batch, it's meant to kick off a different class of propulsion, durability, and overall capability. The real proving ground will be Starship Flight 12, the first time this upgraded engine flies in a full mission profile. Whether that launch happens in December or slips into early next year, it's shaping up to be a make-or-break milestone for the entire Starship program. If that flight works the way SpaceX hopes, it will sign off on years of brutal testing and big bets and crack open the door to truly rapid reuse and payload numbers we've never seen before. With Raptor 3, the goal isn't just a better rocket, it's a different roadmap for reaching other worlds. When the first V3 stack lights up and clears the pad, we'll get a front row look at how far human engineering can really stretch when raw ambition is backed by non-stop iteration. Looking further afield, what does an engine like the Raptor 3 suggest for the aerospace and defense industries? No, we're not bolting methane full-flow engines onto airliners anytime soon, but the underlying breakthroughs, high-pressure combustion, ultra-dense power in a compact package, rapid reuse, and aggressive cost reduction are a blueprint future aerospace systems can borrow from. On the civilian side, the same mindset could feed into point-to-point suborbital transport. 
vehicles that hop across the globe in under an hour, blurring the line between airplane and spaceship. For defense, a world with cheap, rapidly reusable heavy lift changes how militaries think about logistics, surveillance, and deterrence. You can refresh constellations of imaging and communication satellites faster, deploy sensor platforms on demand, and move critical hardware to orbit or the edge of space in hours instead of weeks. Just as jet engines reshaped air power in the 20th century, engines in the Raptor 3 class may quietly define strategic reach in the 21st. The real disruption isn't one weapon or one vehicle. It's the ability to treat near space as a flexible operational layer for commerce, for crisis response, and, yes, for national security. If we handle it wisely, the same technology that can project power can also stitch the planet closer together, making our skies and the space just above them more connected, more responsive, and, ultimately, more useful to everyone on the ground. If you got something out of this breakdown, tap that like button and make sure you're subscribed so you don't miss the next big moves in story. Thanks so much for watching, and remember, as long as you keep looking up, curiosity, imagination, and inspiration won't be far behind. See you on the next journey.